Now discuss about the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is the largest endocrine gland present in lower part of the anterior and lateral side of the neck. First of all, we will discuss about the development of the thyroid gland. During third week of intrauterine life, after folding of the embryo, this is embryo, In this diagram, you can see this is developing foregut, it is midgut, hindgut. This is cranial part of the foregut. Here, a series of thickening appears which form the pharyngeal arches. These pharyngeal arches are initially six in number first, second, third, fourth fifth and sixth. Just after formation, the fifth become disappears. If you find a section like this here, you will find here is mesodermal thickening. First, second, third, fourth, this is sixth. Second, third, fourth and sixth. We have internally light band. Endoderm. This is endodermal lining. This is endodermal lining. This is endodermal lining. And here is ectodermal lining. This is ectodermal lining. Here is this is first arch ectodermal lining. There is first arch, this is second, there is third, this is fourth, this is sixth arch. This is first, first, second, third, fourth and sixth arch. Fifth we can disappear just after its formation. So these are pharyngeal arches. These are pharyngeal arches. Here, during third week of intrauterine life, here is two lingual swelling appears. We have two lingual swelling, and here is another swelling in the midline. This is tubercular impar. These are two lingual swelling, and this is tubercular impar. Just behind the tubercular impa, here, initially endoderm here become thickened. Just behind this tubercular impa, this is thickening of endoderm. If you see this thickening in another diagram, here. This is endodermal lining, this is endodermal lining, and here is thickening of the endoderm. This is thickening of the endoderm. At the side of thickening, gradually a duct is formed which, which grows towards this water side and the at the lower end this become proliferate and forms two lobes. These are two lobes of the thyroid gland. 
these are two loops. So here, at the side of this thickening, if foramen is present, this foramen is known as foramen C cup. This is foramen C cup. And this is thyroglossal duct. This duct is known as thyroglossal duct. Thyroglossal duct. And this is developing thyroid gland. This is developing thyroid gland. Here, this thickening appears during third week of intrauterine life, and this thyroglossal duct grows downward and it divides into two lobes during seventh week of intrauterine life. Here, another structure which arises from fourth pharyngeal pouch, here, fourth pharyngeal pouch, it forms ultimobranchial body or caudal pharyngeal complex which joins this developing thyroid gland. This is ultimobranchial body or caudal pharyngeal complex formed by fourth pharyngeal pouch here. And this gives parafollicular cells or C cells. So C cells arise from this and these C cells incorporated with thyroid gland. And thyroid gland start their functioning around the 11th week of intrauterine life. So this is how the thyroglossal duct formed and descends and ultimately thyroid gland is formed. If you see in another diagram, here is This is developing tongue. This is developing tongue. Here is thyroid hide hide bone. This is hide bone. Here is hide bone. Here is position of thyroid cartilage. Here is position of thyroid cartilage. And here is position of quiet cartilage. This is quiet cartilage. Here is junction of anterior two third and posterior one third of the tongue. This is junction of the anterior two third and posterior one third of the tongue. At the junction, here is the site where this endodermal thickening is present, where Foramen cecum is present. This is site where foramen cecum is present. And from here, thyroglossal duct starts and its course is like this. This duct passes through the substance of the tongue. Here, its position is intralingual. It passes through the tongue, then it reaches up to the suprahyoid position, then passes anterior to hyoid bone, then it passes behind the hyoid bone, like this. This is a retro position. This is retro position. From here, again this descend anterior to this, and ultimately it reaches at the level of its final destination here. So here, the thyroid gland develops. This will be the position of the thyroid gland. Like this. 
So during this course, this may be arrested or the some part of this thyroid tissue may present here. If some part of the tissue remains here, then it is known as lingual thyroid. It may be present here. This is intralingual. It may rest, it may present here suprahyoid. It may present here infrahyoid position. Even this is normal position, it may descend up to thoracic region, intra-thoracic position. So thyroid tissue may present in the weak position. Thyroid gland has two lobes and isthmus during development. There may be absent of one lobe, absent of isthmus. Sometimes the pyramidal lobe is present, this portion forms the pyramidal lobe. And sometimes this, this portion forms the levator glandular thyroid. This is levator glandular thyroid. So, pyramidal lobe and levator glandular thyroid may persist. If this portion do not disappear, usually these parts become disappear. So, this is uh, how this thyroglossal duct formed and reaches here and here it forms the thyroid gland. So, this is all about the development of the thyroid gland.